Hey everyone, this is Dr. Ezra with Integrative Kidney Institute and today I'm going to be talking to you about understanding the, the genetics of uh, chronic kidney disease and this is a first in a series of videos that we're going to be um, talking about genetics and kidney disease but it does pretty much cover the first principle of our integrative approach to kidney health and uh, basically the first principle is understanding genetics and epigenetics. Uh, we have a video about epigenetics in the past so hopefully you will get back to, to it and I'll put the link for it here. Uh, I do want to also uh, mention that these series of blogs uh, and videos about genetics are sponsored by Natera so in, in all transparency here but these are all based on uh, research and uh, science so just to to make sure that we get this out of the way so let's do this so we know that we inherit 23 pairs of chromosomes 23 from each parents and these chromosomes contain the genetic codes that we inherit from our parents and this genetic codes is present in the spiral called dna and that forms multiple genes that encode many proteins and, and structures that help us function and do our biological functions. And uh, it's interesting here that we as human being has 22,000, more than 22,000 genes, while grapes have more than 30,000 genes. And uh, another interesting concept is that we share a lot of our uh, genes with other animals and uh, in fact if you compare uh, the genes with with cats for example we share about 80% uh, percent of the genes and and between us as human being we share 99.9% .9 of our genome uh, and that only 0.1% is responsible responsible for all the variation between person to person. So we go back to this DNA which is this double the spiral that um, contain uh, our genetic code and it's basically formed from formed uh, of uh, four nucleotides adenine, thymine, guanine and cytosine. These four base pair can be placed after each other in different format to to create a code that is, that codes our genetic characters and we want to think about ourselves as protein factories so we have that dna which provide the code and that is transcribed into an rna which end up translated in our protein factory to make proteins that help us provide all the biological function for our body so we have, as I mentioned, 20, more than 22,000 genes. And these code for a lot of uh, proteins that help us w uh, in, in biological functions, such as enzymes, structural proteins, protein that help us with our immunity and, 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 and so on. And we saw there are some portion of those proteins we don't know what, what they do. Now, when we look at those uh, base pair we talked about, you can imagine that any change in one base pair can cause problems, can cause a genetic variant that we call is a single nucleotide polymorphism. So one uh, change in the base pair is called single nucleotide, nucleotide polymorphism. And, and genetic is important for our body because it kind of determines the type of food that we like, it determines how we digest and absorb food, it determines the metabolism and detoxification of toxins and, and other things that we ingest, and it, it determines how we produce hormones and how hormones and medication um, act, and also it, it really the same as detoxification, it, it codes into medication metabolism. And certainly we'll talk about the uh, genetic diseases that are um, pure genetic kidney diseases. So when we look at the type of food that we eat, we research has found that you know, uh, 
we have different taste buds in our tongue, for example, and um, people who taste bitter um, have increased likelihood to not like eating veggies. So there are SNPs that have been associated with increased taste of bitterness. And in this study uh, I'm sharing with you, they found that uh, people who carry the SNPs are likely to eat 200 serving of veggies less per year than people who don't have that SNPs. And when you look at the enzymes that help us digest foods, these are also coded in uh, the genetic codes, and any mutation in any of these enzymes can cause problems with digestion and absorption. And, and we talked about the detoxification that goes into phase one and phase two in the liver, and that requires specific enzymes, and those enzymes can also have genetic mutation that affect the way that we metabolize food and toxins and medications. So if you have a detoxific detoxification enzyme, um, we, any slight variation in amino acid sequence will cause a polymorphism and that may increase your capacity to detoxify or decrease your capacity to detoxify. And when we look at medications, now there's this whole new science that is called pharmacogenomics, where some genetic variants or SNPs in the metabolism of certain uh, medications can lead to the, the medication either being metabolized faster, requiring higher dose of the medication, or metabolized lower, requiring uh, less medication. So pharmacogenomics look at how an individual metabolize a medication to determine the dose that he or she would receive. Now, when we talk about genetics specifically of kidney disease, there are specific kidney disease that have that are full-blown, specifically genetic disease. There's a mutation, we know what the mutation does, and it causes kidney disease such as polycystic kidney disease, Alport syndrome, Fabry's, Fabry's disease. Now there are mutations or, or, or genetic variants that increase the susceptibility that your chance of having systemic disease like diabetes and lupus. And if you have them, there are you know some variants that can also increase your risk of having kidney disease from them. There are genetic variants that have been also associated with increased risk of chronic kidney disease in general, such as the UMOD uh, gene mutations and, and uh, SHRM3 mutations. And um, again, we any variation in the uh, genes that metabolize and eliminate toxins or heavy metals can affect the kidneys in an indirect way by increasing the toxicity of these uh, substances. So in the past, we used to have this uh, clunky way of checking for uh, genetic mutation, genetic variants. So we, if, if we suspect that uh, a person have uh, a genetic disorder, you send the patient to um, have a specific test to look at specific gene mutation. And that used to be the basic of uh, what so-called Sanger uh, sequencing um, but now we have, in the last few years, we entered a new era where there's something called next generation sequencing. And that will, what it does, it will uh, perform a, a massive parallel sequencing of millions of fragments of DNA simultaneously. So instead of looking at one gene at a time, you look at a bunch of genes and we compare the result with well-known genetic variants from the genome-wide association studies, which pretty much looked at the gen genotype and compared it with the phenotype or the type of kidney disease that manifested in families. And by doing that, we can compare the, what we found with these results in a, a, with a simple software. The, this evaluation can be done by a fraction of the time and require small sample size and uh, low cost. And at the same time, you can look at multiple genes and get 
faster results. The beauty of this is that now, instead of like looking for the whole genome, we look at something called the exome. And the exome is that part, the 2% part of the genome that really codes for proteins. So the other parts of the genome actually do not really, what we call non-coding. So they either uh, introduce the, the gene or, you know, like kind of tell the, the, the factory, here we're starting a gene to code. And then at the end we say, hey, we're done here. So these are non-coding parts of the genome, but the, the part that is um, coding to, to proteins is called the exome. Um, and here I'm sharing a study that was published in 2019 that talked about the diagnostic utilities of uh, exome sequencing for kidney disease. And uh, we'll talk about this in future videos. But the study showed that the yield of genetic testing for kidney disease is about 10%. So Natera is the company that I use for uh, genetic testing for kidney patients. Uh, their test arena site uh, provide uh, testing for 382 genes using the next generation sequencing we talked about. And the result comes within three to four weeks and uh, it's very comprehensive. I hope you like the video. If you like uh, the video, please uh, don't forget to press the like button and subscribe to our channel and follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter and uh, follow our English and Arabic channel. And we also on www.inkidney.com.